Welcome back to Sunrise. Now, the governorship and state houses of assembly elections are set to hold on March the 9th in 29 states. And the Independent National Electoral Commission says it has made progress for the smooth conduct of the polls. Yes, INEC says, forget the last election. Whatever errors were made there, they were corrected already. And going to this election is going to be one of the smoothest, they say. A1. A1. Plus. Okay. Oh, plus the but, day. Yeah, plus the day. <laughs> Hopefully. Now, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, met with the resident electoral commissioners on Thursday and said the go governorship election will hold in 29 states. And in all the states of the federation, there will be state assembly elections and in the federal capital state where the area council elections coincide with the general elections. At the end of the day, it's to the same thing that was done last weekend is going to be done in the States. How well would it go? What should the people know? How would they prepare themselves, the electorate? Those that didn't come out for the president, how do we get them to come out? For, those that didn't come out for the presidential elections, how do we get them to come out for the state elections? Because this is about, I mean, for, you can actually walk to... It's closer to uh, them. You can walk to the state house. I mean, that man who's representing the state assembly might be your neighbor today. So <clears> when he comes back building three houses, he's going to say, come, wait, wait, wait. They don't do door-to-door -door campaigning. We don't know who our reps are. That's the thing. So Alero might actually be representing me in my state assembly, and I would not know. So I'd better start asking her, now, Alero, are you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so help us discuss this and preparations for the governorship elections. We have Juliet Benita, a member of the Institute for National Transformation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. She's actually the director for programs there. Also here is Dr. Chima Naji, a legal practitioner. Mr. Proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> and Edeki Mokwede, who's a social commentator. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Lady and gentlemen, permit me to start with the gentleman, and I'll start with you. No problem. What was it like last week in the presidential elections for you? For me, well, if I start from my own area, we didn't have any issues. So I was thinking that this would work. That's not VGC, is it? Close. Where we saw a barbecue spit and people no, sipping close. wine. Yes, close. Close, actually. <laughs> but... We didn't have any issues at all. And, um, but if you look on the other side, from the stories that now came in, it became a sad story. Mm. It became a sad story. I remember my wife calling me and screaming on the phone, this is what is happening, this is what is happening, this is what is happening. And Wait, she the, voted somewhere else? No, or? no, no, no. Because she was getting information on her phone, especially okay. with all the videos and so on, you know the uh, eyewitness accounts and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. And it was, it was terrible. Mm. Um, it didn't have happened. And um, if you give um, a shoot a site order, oh. then you have created uh, an avenue for those who... But do you think that situation can be improved on? In this yes, it, it can be improved on. It really can be. And... Um, as much as possible, talk to these people. Especially now, the the even within the people that went in there, especially in the Okota, these were not the these were not they were not policemen or anything. These were just people who should have been voting, who were not voting, and going about and disrupting elections where they should have taken place. Bad. That's the issue. We, we must, the, the, the law enforcement agents must step up their game. Stop it mm. the moment it starts. Now, it affected from the people that lived in that area. I have a, a classmate who lived in that area. He said, look, this thing affected maybe one or two polling units. units mm. Right? But look at how it... Been blown up. Yeah. Blown up. Yeah. Mm. Right. And but, but China... Some people are saying that these people who did all this had the courage to do it because, one, they knew they were going to get away with it. And then, two, they may have been ordered by someone to do it. 
So when he says, talk to these people, who should be the one talking to them? Well, <clears throat> first and foremost, like you said, uh, I have some deal with the uh, proverb. Let me just... <laughs> 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 Any child uh. sent to steal by his father uses his leg to break the door because there's, there's no consequence on him. The father will bear the... The father who gave the instruction may have taken care of the situation. Mm. So that actually takes care of the culture of impunity that we have. Nobody sets out to do harm without having looked back, even if it fails later, mm. how his back will be covered. Who to talk to? That's the million dollar question. And who will listen? The situation itself breeds crisis, and it is deliberately so. Look, Alero, as we are seated here now, if all of us are so uh, interested in meat, and somebody brings one piece of meat and say, for you people, <laughs> <laughs> only those who know that when they step out of here, they will get access to meat might say, I'm not interested in the struggle. Otherwise, there's a crisis inbuilt in that piece of meat. And the person who did that will be watching us on the video. <laughs> if you take that down to the level of dogs, a hungry dog, you, give, you drop a piece of bone and release some dogs. What do you see? Some will leave that bone and be biting the other dogs. He's not addressing the bone. No. He wants to finish with the other dogs so that it will have access, a peaceful, well, to that bone. <laughs> that is the Nigerian politics. It is stewed in crisis. And those who deliberately did so knew mm. the extent to which that crisis can snowball, and even to the extent of consuming their opponents, mm. so that they will have access to our national teal, unimpeded. Mm. So when you say talk to who, and nobody is going to talk to anybody. One day when all of us are saturated with this blood, pain, agony, and query money, then we will come back. Because after the fight, those who survive will say, no to. more, we, we cannot go again on this, on this trajectory. Yeah. In 2015, if you remember, we were on set here mm -hmm. on the, uh, the previous election. I remember vividly we advocated for a depersonalized electoral process in which human intervention and interference will play a very minimal role. Mm -hmm. And we oh, came with technology. the verdict that technology must drive the process. Mm -hmm. We now see what technology has done in the telecom which has been grafted into the banking industry. Yes. Otherwise, people are stealing money with their ATM. You, you collect 100,000 here, then you go to the other side. But once the bar is placed, if you go to Medugri, you go to Calabar, it is that bar that is there. Yeah. And people continue to front the demerits and do not see the, the myriads of the, mm. the, the, the merits for mm -hmm. you know, deploying that technology because they, they want to use that narrow aspect mm. to game the system. So nobody is going to talk to anybody. And if anybody talks as we are talking now, mm -hmm. nobody will listen. Mm. They will hear you talking, but they will not listen. Yeah. Yeah. And because they don't listen, they are not likely to act in the right way. Mrs. Minitia, um, about 36 people died because we had elections in our country. Reported ones. Reported, exactly. Um, it is very, very painful. And we know that all the deaths happened in the southern part of Nigeria. Majority. Needless deaths. So for as long as getting into political office is so lucrative, people are going to kill, people are going to die, 
So why are we not talking about making those positions less lucrative? Make Senate, for instance, a part-time job and not pay people the kind of monies that we hear, even though they have refused to confess to us how much they earn. We know that it is lucrative. You become local government chairman tomorrow, and within months, you are riding several black jeeps. You have built houses in Ikoi and probably bought flats in Mayfair as well. <laughs> Those positions are too lucrative. People are bound to kill to get there. Is it not time for us to begin to talk about how to remove the locker of those positions? Um, Aunt Ellery, you're talking about removing locker. How, who is removing this locker has become the, the critical people factor. who are benefiting mm -hmm. from exactly. it. Exactly. Um, I was talking to a young man yesterday. I said, we have a nation that we designed. Many of these people are well-traveled. We must agree with that. They go for holidays. They understand that nations have built systems. So they are not ignorant that systems can be built. So because I used to think that, okay, maybe they were too blind. And recently I found that it was not blindness, but actual strategy to keep others below them and they keep on perpetuating themselves. It is the same feudal system that has driven nations that drove England in the past and people rose up to change it. It has driven Nigeria until now. The sense of big manism is not so much so of only the money because how much money does a man want to keep accumulating? It's also prestige and power over others. And therefore, we have a responsibility, for example, in the Institute for National Transformation, we, we, we are taking responsibility to do what we call an grassroots, uproot training to deal with the issues of the value system and to show the Nigerians that you have the nation you have designed. Do not complain about Nigeria. Nigeria is not Ghanaians that are running it. We are not being run by Senegalese or Americans. Nigeria is being run by Nigerians. What does that say about us? It shows us that even at the elite class level, because I really don't want to talk about these people down there because they are, they are almost, in quote, oppressed, depressed, and hungry. And like I said, if people are hungry, I don't know if anybody saw a video yesterday that was going around, but apparently they say it happened on Monday. When I opened the video, I had a lot of goosebumps because somebody actually did the area view of whether it was rice or something being shared, and people were like bees. So when he talked about the meat in place, why? We have designed a hungry system. We have designed a nation where people are hungry. So I need to bow to uh, Barista Chime to get what I need. There is a bowing it will, it will to receive. Naira Ex exactly. Enough to so you have not created the monetary 50, policy. 50 naira. People exactly. have short orders. You have not created the monetary policy or the fiscal policy that will advance. Take, for example, what was the delay in passing the INEC bill that needed us to make things easier? To pass that bill will shortchange us, them, yep. the people who will advance. You see, this, these are strategic evil planners. You don't want to pass a bill because it's going to be an advantage. So on Saturday, we're going back to counting ballot. And God behold us that who knows what you voted at the... Uh, PU, mm. we end up at collation. The last time on Friday before the election, on the 22nd, I gave INEC a mark for preparation, and I mm. talked about uh, uh, operational. Right now, I've, I've told myself, I've taken back my marks that I gave INEC on Friday, <laughs> like a professor whose student messes up and they found out that the student probably cheated or do something. And I have torn the paper up and told INEC, you did not do a good job. In short, the fact that we're having an election next week, we, we need to propel people to come out. Mm. A young man I met, we're talking about you who wants change. I said, are you going to vote next week, um, Saturday? He said, mm. he said uh, auntie, I'm not coming out. I said, ah, this is our civic responsibility. Mm. It is our Grandma. own. The <laughs> young man was looking at me. He said, he said, auntie, I don't know if my vote will be counted. I said, how can you continue to say that? Your vote will be counted, I assure you. Mm. He said, auntie, yeah. I don't know whether the last one was counted. Mm. But these are the things that we're seeing. Alero. So if we want to create a nation, we will create a nation. I don't know how long Nigerians are willing to go on this long journey of change and prosperity and wanting. Let me, let me say this. I was looking through Lin Kuan Yi's statement about Africans. And you will permit me to quote a few, and I'll probably quote more. 
He said, African leaders in the 60s, not 70s, not 80s, in the very 60s, Li Kuai came to Africa, to several nations in Africa for mentorship. He was building his nation. And he believed that these people that have gotten independence before us may have a, an idea or two. Mm -hmm. He came to Nigeria, went to Ghana and several places. He made a conclusion. He said, African leaders do not know how political power is an opportunity to create economic prosperity for the people. That African leadership do not have the social capacity to go beyond ethnic and religious uh, um, um, lines. One of the ones that got to me say African leaders are not pragmatic. In other words, you and I here were speaking on, on the behalf of many voices and asking them for the opportunity whether they will listen. And the ones who are listening, are they willing for a new nation? I was coming to China this morning. I asked myself, just like uh, Paris Tachimi said, said, are we giving one meat for several people? The reason why it is lucrative, the same people who are creating the law are in the system. So actually, for how do you do it? The only way is to create a new people. How do you create a new people is the most difficult thing to do, but it's a possible thing to do. And I believe one of the projects Nigeria is to work on the mindset. And let's see how we can intervene in family policies that will affect families. What can we intervene in the educational system? Because we don't have civic anymore. At least in growing up, there was a sense of nationalism. And Alera, I can say that you grew up in the midst of nationalism. The generation today doesn't understand that word. What does it mean to have the Nigerian interest? It's my interest, me. It is what I want. It is what I will get. Because I need to show my neighbor I have what? Arrived. I better pass my neighbor. That is it. So these are the things that we are wrestling with. But we can do it. But next week, Saturday, is just the beginning of the turning of the wheels of democracy. Mm -hmm. But does, will it achieve our goals? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. But we need to still do a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. okay, talking about the locker of office, many people who are in the Senate, for instance, you can't by any stretch of the imagination describe them as poor. So can't one of them rise up and put forward a bill and say, look, we've got to get this thing right. Before you answer that, we'll just go on a quick break, think about it, <laughs> and we'll come back shortly. <sighs> Don't go away. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. So, Mr. Mokwede, the question I ever asked, who will bail the cut? Nahim. There's honor among thieves. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is difficult for the people, those of them who are there now, it is difficult for them to rise up against themselves. It's difficult. Now, if we borrow from what Julia said, if we look at the uh, Singapore situation, a few of them came out from the same system, right? It would take something of, I don't know whether we have a few new ones that may be willing to build a cart. But someone has to rise up above all of these things. Otherwise, let's not go the way of blood. Because the way we are going, it may take something like that. We don't want to go back to what was experienced in the 60s, in the three years of the Civil War. Hold on. Let me just... I should have. Now that you mentioned the yes. Civil War, someone sent in the mail here from Ghana. His name is Diamond Roland. He says he resides in Ghana. And he wrote something. He says, there's a, a proper peace accord of the Civil War should be looked at and ensure that Nigeria's spirit as one nation rules in Nigeria's heart. And that will change the mentality and attitudes of both leaders and followers. And this will build Nigeria. Fine. Now, that's that, um, from that Diamond was, Roland. That was a but chance I was, that was missed. I read this. Ethiopia had a civil war for 14 years. Nigeria was three years, right? Mm -hmm. But Ethiopia right now is, it has one of the best airlines in the world. And it's moving forward. So did anyone come from outside to build that? People decided that it was enough. We need 
some of them to also rise up. It is possible. Any of these things are possible. It is possible, but someone has to take responsibility for it. Can the electorate take that responsibility of deciding who goes into these offices if, in this weekend? If their votes actually count. Now, let, let's look at what happened in Kwara, for instance. That man was actually voted out. Now, who has replaced him? Is it someone of that kind of mindset. If it is, there may be a bit of hope. But if, it is, if there's not, if, there's, if we don't, if we keep replacing with like minds, mm. we have a problem. So if someone that was a, a governor in the state, that quite clearly certain things have gone wrong and you elevate him to the Senate, what's going to happen? Oh, is it an elevation? Well, mm. I don't know. They think it's an elevation. If you are, if you are, I think that it's a step. I think that 